Massive droughts are seeing western U.S. states turn to cloud seeding to help get more water. Here's how it works and the potential issues. Western U.S. states, in the midst of a two-decade-long drought that is the worst in 1,200 years, are turning to cloud seeding to increase the water supply, according to CNN, with Wyoming a recent adopter of the method. The process involves inserting silver iodide crystals, which have a shape similar to ice crystals, into clouds so supercooled water droplets accumulate around them and gain enough mass to form snowflakes. Proponents say studies prove more snow is created than otherwise would have fallen, and that at $28 to $34 per acre, it represents one effective countermeasure against droughts. However, seeding cannot be done without clouds that are going to produce a certain amount of snow anyway, and some are concerned it is effectively stealing snow from other areas rather than making more. UCLA climate scientist Daniel Swain told CNN, It may be, at least on a regional basis, a zero-sum game where if water falls out of the cloud in one spot, it's even drier by the time it makes it downwind. This theory is hard to defend against because the amount of additional snowfall is actually difficult to prove. Julie Gonzar, program manager for Wyoming's weather modification program, admitted that while they know cloud seeding makes more snow fall than an area would otherwise receive, it's difficult to know exactly how much more they are getting because there is really no way to know how much precipitation a cloud would have produced without human intervention. These issues, along with some more quickly dismissed concerns about the safety of using silver iodide, have not stopped governments in a whole host of other countries trying out the idea, however. In 2014, for instance, the Malaysian Meteorological Department carried out cloud seeding operations over several areas affected by severe drought. In that case, they used 1,000-liter tanks of sodium chloride solution rather than silver iodide, spraying it at the base of selected clouds. Using this method, it takes at least 15 minutes after the solution has been sprayed for the cloud to grow heavy and water to begin to fall down as rain. The same method was also used by the Indonesian government in 2013 in an attempt to promote rain and extinguish forest and bushfires on the island of Sumatra that covered neighboring Singapore and Malaysia with a thick blanket of smog. Alternatively, just last year, the United Arab Emirates claimed very unusual torrential rain that fell in the desert country for a few days was due to its multi-million dollar cloud seeding efforts. This is particularly interesting because one of the ways in which the UAE seeds clouds is by using electricity-inducing drones. They get catapulted into the air and cruise through the sky, gathering weather data and giving a nudge to clouds in the form of an electrical charge. The idea is that the electrical charge helps clump water droplets and other particles together to make new and bigger clouds that actually have a chance to generate much-needed precipitation. This is important since the UAE typically receives only 4 inches or 10 centimeters of rain per year. The idea is to make the droplets inside the clouds big enough so that when they fall out of the cloud, they survive down to the surface. Of course, clouds aren't the only arena for the battle against drought that will increasingly come to define the world in the next few decades as climate change takes hold and major polluters continue not to be held to account. Rich countries will certainly attempt to innovate themselves out of difficult climate decisions, rightly or wrongly, in ways not available to poorer places. In 2015, for instance, millions of plastic shade balls were poured into the Los Angeles Reservoir to help protect water quality and prevent evaporation. Hollow and weighted down with water, the balls remain on the water surface and protect it from dust, rain, and birds, and reduce algae growth. The balls also block the water surface from the sun, preventing bromide and chlorine in the water from reacting and forming bromate, a known carcinogen. Less than $35 million was used to produce the shade balls, an amount much smaller than the estimated $300 million cost of covering the 175-acre facility. Climate models predict that the Tibetan Plateau, which holds Asia's biggest freshwater reserve, could see severe drought due to decreased rainfall and rising temperatures. In response, China is building combustion chambers to turn solid fuel into silver iodide for cloud seeding and placing them on steep mountainsides. Winds help produce an upward draft that sweeps the particles into the clouds, where they then induce rain or snow. The plan is to bring precipitation over an area spanning 1.6 million square kilometers, or three times the size of Spain. 500 chambers have so far been deployed in Tibet and Xinjiang. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.